Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Take 5. We're in John 12, verse 21. I'm sorry, John 13, verse 21. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table close to Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. And after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Alright, some things here. First of all, Jesus told the disciples. They're all there gathered together. They're having what's now known as the Lord's Supper. Back then it was known as the Passover. Okay, so they're eating the Passover meal. And back then they, they laid, they, they sat down on the floor on cushions and, and reclined and the tables were low. And, you know, they kind of lean one way or lean the other way and, and would eat their meal. And so Jesus is talking to them and he says, one of you is going to betray me. Of course, they all, what they're wondering is, you know, is it me? Am I the one that's going to betray you? That's, that's what they're wondering. They're searching their own souls. So they want to find out exactly who it is. So John, sorry about that. I got, if you can hear it, my phone is ringing, but I don't want to stop what I'm doing here. John kind of signals Okay, that's who he's referring to here, the disciple. Um, verse 24. So Simon Peter motioned to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking, the disciple whom Jesus loved. That was the one talking about in 23. That's how John always referred to himself. He didn't even want to give himself any credit um, you know, when he wrote this gospel. But anyway, so Peter kind of makes some kind of motion like, hey, hey ask him. So, so John sort of whispers in his ear, you know, who's it going to be? Je Jesus says, look, whoever I give this bread to, I'm going to dip it, give it to him, that's him. Well, Jesus does it, but these guys, they're kind of dense, and we've seen this before, you know. Remember when they were back in, and he fed 5,000, and then they were out, and uh, he says, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, and they think, oh, well, you're saying that because we forgot to bring bread. Okay, they... Sometimes they don't get real obvious stuff. Well, that's what happened here. Jesus said, look, it's the guy I'll give this bread to. Well, he gave the bread to Judas, but yet they still didn't really know because they thought when he said, what you're going to do, do quickly, they thought he meant he'd go buy some provisions or something. So, they didn't get it. But that's okay. We don't always get everything either. But there's a couple things I want to focus on. First of all is the fact that Jesus said, somebody's going to betray me. And I will just tell you, right now, if it hasn't happened already, somebody's going to betray you. Sometime in your life, somebody close to you is going to turn their back on you and hurt you. Jesus promised anyone who followed him there would be persecutions, and one of the persecution is that people close to you will turn against you. So, go ahead and understand it's going to happen. Do not let that deter you from continuing to follow God. And I think that was the point here that Jesus was making. Say, look, somebody's going to betray me, but it's all in line with God's will, and I'm going to keep pushing forward. Second thing, your heart can get so hard that God allows Satan to enter it. Now, we're always in a spiritual battle, all right? We're always dealing with the forces of good and the forces of evil. We have the angels trying to help us follow God and the demons trying to deter us from following God and this is true whether we're Christians or not okay there's a spiritual battle going for us those of us who are Christians have the Holy Spirit helping us alright and we can more we, we can have more success but there's a spiritual battle alright but even as a Christian if you choose to go against the Holy Spirit, if you choose to disobey God long enough, 
the Bible teaches that God will in effect hand you over to Satan he'll allow Satan to have his will with you and that's what happened here Satan actually entered Jesus I mean Judas I'm sorry I'm so, so sorry Judas Satan entered Judas now this was because Judas has opened his heart up for that see that's not going to happen unless you open your heart up for it you'll still be tempted you'll still be dealing with attack but it's like this uh, you know you've got a fortress around you that's the Holy Spirit and God's angels and the church and all of that but if you continue to disobey God he'll remove that fortress and the devil can come on in you're still going to have to keep them out there you're still going to have to fight them off and you're still going to mess up from time to time but if you're if you choose to be disobedient he can come right on into your heart and then at that point it's no longer a choice then you are completely enslaved and you're going to do what he wants you to do that's what happened here Satan entered Judas and now at this point Judas had no more choice same thing happened back in Exodus if you look when uh, it said uh, Pharaoh hardened his heart Pharaoh hardened his heart Pharaoh hardened his heart God hardened his heart and what that means is God allowed Satan to get on in there best thing you can do is stay faithful and true to this word keep fighting every day and Satan won't enter your heart and just remember two things you, somebody's going to betray you and keep fighting to keep Satan from out, out of your heart. All right? Kind of a rough one today with the phone ringing and all that. Thanks for hanging in there. I'll try to get back on tomorrow. I always try. You never know how it's going to go on the next edition of Take 5.